which is uh, reports again informational cab reports on mule deer overview efforts within each county anybody uh, want to report on that Lori yep one at a time for the record, Gil Yana, Carson Advisory Board. Uh, I want to report that uh, what we're attempting to do with the uh, Tri-County Deer Herd Restoration Working Group, and that's composed of uh, Washoe County, Carson City, and, and Douglas County. And um, at, the, at their last meeting, all three county boards uh, agreed that it would be important to have Endow staff attend these meetings uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, the area biologist and hopefully maybe Tony Wasley, uh, they could all get together and discuss the concepts and the ideas that they have and save a lot of time of you know coming up with recommendations and then they be shot, being shot down because they failed to overlook, they failed to, to consider something in, in their recommendations. So we think if we could get attendance by Endow staff, by our area biologist, and possibly Tony, uh, we would save an awful lot of time. The, um, eventually, we would like to come forth with request for heritage funds to focus on the Carson Range, Area 19, with some focus on Area 29. Uh, they would be jointly, uh, developed jointly with Endow staff for cemental for next year's Heritage Fund requests. Uh, the request would first address the existing conditions, including habitat populations, including interstate and in-state herds, urban development, and other such criteria by either major drainages or geographical delineators yet to be determined. The request would address trends within the delineators with and without treatments. And the goal is to be able to make treatment requests that are monetized and measurable and then be used for future discussions. So that's what we've been doing so far. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Corey? Oh, uh, and Lincoln, we put together a uh a spreadsheet uh, kind of detailing the harvest results, uh, hunter success, and a compilation of the number of tags versus number of, you know, species killed or deer killed uh, for the decade 2000-2009. Uh, we're going to use it as an appendix to our mule deer plan. So we just kind of presented that uh, at this meeting, and we'll just kind of slowly work that into our mule deer plan. Be you know, we, we did that... Uh, because harvest is such an easily measurable item, and a lot of people see harvest as a sole reason for fluctuation in, in numbers. So we wanted to kind of break that down over a 10 year period for the main units in Lincoln County. and We'll kind of work it into the plan. I don't have a copy with me. I've got one out in my pickup. I'll be happy to bring it and uh, get it to you, just so you can see what we've done. So that's just one more step in our, in our process for the long term. Thank you. Oh, for the record, Corey, Lincoln Cab. Thank you, Corey. Anyway. Rick Smith, Washoe County. Um, I need to apologize to the commission because uh, our secretary, uh, Rex Flowers, had asked to put this on our agenda. We were going to discuss the progress. Uh, we have Rex that um, is sits in or listens to the mule deer subcommittee, and then we have uh, Judy Karen that was had volunteered to sit on the Tri-County Committee and he Rex had given it in time for the uh, posting however when we when I downloaded the our uh, agenda the day of our meeting the one that was on the internet was not the amended agenda and therefore I felt but it was necessary that we postpone it to the August meeting because I felt it would be a conflict of an open meeting law that it wasn't a posted item. Even though we had made the agenda, the agenda had been sent out, but what people could download from the internet did not have that, so I felt that was not appropriate. So we 
tabled it and just moved it to the August meeting. So we have nothing to report right now. Thank you. Any other uh, kind of advisory board, Mr. Chairman? Commissioner Ray. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. This morning we had a meeting of the Mule Deer Restoration Committee, and at that we were, pre um, we were given a brief presentation by our um, County Advisory Board Liaison, Corey Lytle, and what we saw from that was that the only two counties that essentially gave us any recommendations were Lyon County and Lincoln County. And there are copies of those that I that we had from that meeting and I was gonna give get them to Suzanne and maybe we get those redistributed out to the commission. Afterwards these are actually were on they would be on part of the record of that committee action. And I do have those and I do need to get those part of the record of that committee, so hopefully we can get those distributed out. But those are the only two county advisory boards that had uh, anything reported that time. Okay, let's go on to uh, the next item under the reports, uh, Bighorn Sheep Disease Update, Larry Gilbertson. Larry, Gilbert, Larry Gilbertson, Department of Wildlife. Okay, I've got an update on the uh, bighorn die-off for units 101 and 102 from the biologist over there. And at this point, um, we've documented uh, 155 that we've actually accounted for in both units 101 and 102. Uh, it, it includes 52 rams, 85 ewes, and 15 lambs. And three unknown just parts. Basically in the Ruby Mountains uh, it seems like the mortality has subsided in the last couple of weeks. However animals that died early on in January and December in the disease event are still being found. So we have found you know a few carcasses lately, old ones. Of the 16 marked sheep in the Ruby Mountains, those are animals that we handled and either put radio collars and or ear tags we still have are able to count for nine of those 16. Two of these marked ewes presently have suckling lambs and one other unmarked ewe has been observed with a lamb also, which is a good sign, but quite often after one of these disease outbreaks, the lambs, when they get together about six weeks after birth and they get together, one of them, for some reason or another, one of the mothers will still be carrying it and when they all get together often other states have documented losses at that point so we are still following them up and and trying to see if the if they make it or not so in the uh, ruby mountains unit 102 uh, the number of uh, animals we've actually documented that died there was 38 and uh, that was 20 rams 11 ewes and seven lambs for the east humboldt range Sheep continue to succumb to pneumonia. We've had more recent animals that we picked up there. And of the 15 marked sheep that we were able to get our hands on there, 12 of those 15 have died. And two are alive and one we don't know about yet. We initially observed two lambs there in the middle of May. However, one of the reproductively successful ewes succumbed to pneumonia. So. It, that was in June, so the lamb also died. In recent weeks, no lambs have been seen with the uh, other successful ewe, and uh, it's it's also believed to be dead, the other ewe that we saw there with the lamb. So on that mountain in the East Humboldt's Unit 101, we've documented a total of 117 bighorn that died, and that was 32 rams, 72 74 ewes and eight lambs and three unknown. In the East Humboldt range, we can account for 14 live animals right now. That's all that, you know, with the P, we have others out looking. We have a couple of Lathrop students that are spending time backpacking and following the few radios that are left. And the biologist is trying to spend time and we've had uh, some, a couple of people from Reno go over and help. Uh, Perry's assistant, our, our veterinarian. Uh, her, her assistant went over and helped and so 
Yeah, and there's various other people. You know, there's some sportsmen who spend a lot of time out there. It's their favorite thing to do. And, and everybody we talk to, we're collecting information and comparing notes on, on who has seen which animals and whether they're marked or not marked. And so we've come up with 14 animals that, that we can account for there in the uh, East Humboldt range. And we can account for 19 in the rubies so far. And in the rubies, that's seven rams, 10 ewes, and two lambs. And over in the East Humboldt range, it's three rams and 11 ewes at this point, is what we know about. So we're gonna to continue to follow the rest of the summer and uh, you know, give a report as, as we collect information on it. I, I had a question, in a, in a percentage, uh, I saw the numbers, but what percentage have we lost in the uh, 101 and what percentage have we lost in 102 of the sheep? Caleb, um, you see, I, ha I asked him the percentages, and he kind of gave me a number for the entire population, and he thinks it's around 45% of what we thought, that we've actually seen, that we've documented, 45% uh, of both populations is what we've recovered. And, you know, and that's pretty unprecedented in a die-off. Normally, it, that's what's different about this die-off is it's just... It's, a, it's good access, and especially in the winter when they're down in places that people can get to. It's really popular. There's a lot of people that, that in, on both mountains that spend a lot of time. And so um, we were really able to document a lot more on this die-off than on a normal. Normally you find out almost after the fact and bones and things are scattered all over the place and it's really hard to document those kinds of numbers. So. We were pretty fortunate to be able to even to get that kind of a sample size, but it it does suggest that it's it's really significant. 80, 90 percent of the population there's a really good chance it's it's that bad. So you're saying 45 percent we've lost, right? Well, that we've seen bones we've picked up, animals we've recovered, and and you can imagine all the places in between where we were able to walk and able to get around all the little brush pockets and gullies that you don't get to and one of the ways in the winter that you were able to find a lot of them was just by the trails of, of things going in in the snow and and you know then once the snow's gone you know trying to find them out there is just really difficult so that's what really helped us this time to find that many so. before i open it up for questions for you i'd, I'd like you to you know at every commission meeting give us a report even if there's nothing to report yeah, on this, you know, every commission give us a report on the sheep update because it's of concern to everybody. And even if you don't have any new data, just tell us no new data. But okay. I'd, I'd like to just continue here at, at every commission meeting. And sure. let's turn and see if we got any questions for any commissioners. Commissioner Capurro. Thank you, sir. And, uh, one thing that would help because it sounds like the, the die off percentage of these tumbles is higher than it is for the uh, North Rubies. Uh, it would help be helpful if we got it broken down that way next time. But that's that's 117 that died. Is that the number that, that uh, died on? In the East Humboldt's, we've actually recovered 117. Actually recovered, so. Yeah. You know, what, is, was there some kind of a starting figure? That yeah, the original, I, I can't give it to you exactly, but from what I remember, the original population estimate in there was in the realm of 160 to 180. I think people had actually counted 160 some. So we were estimating in that range somewhere. And so we recovered 117. And initially we thought that it was a lot bigger episode going on in the East Humboldt's. But after more follow-up, there's w there's some suggestion that we picked up on the rubies a little later, and it may have actually the die-off may have started earlier in the rubies, and so but it was when there it was before the middle of winter when they were up and and spread out more, and it's just because places we went away from Lamoille Canyon, we thought we'd have quite a few in the other wintering areas. There's a few other little wintering spots and we got into those places and, and found darn few animals and then the more people walk around up there they're finding bones and things and so we think it, it, the die-offs were probably just as big on both mountains except that we found out about the rubies a little bit late. 
and and then that were and then the East Humboldt's actually the middle of the die off we got right in the middle of it and so that's why we saw so much there I think this is you know the, the commissioners I get asked about you know why do we close the season and I think this just reinforces we did the right thing by putting us not not close the season I'm sorry we did not zero close the season. we put a zero quota and I think that uh, this just reinforced we did the right thing uh, Commissioner Al thank you Mr. Chair. when did we first plant sheep in there how long ago was that oh gosh what was that um, 18 years I think I think it was very early 90s yeah, and this is the second die-off it's the second die-off for the rubies it's the first for these tumbles the first die-off was 96 97 and it and was the, significant also and it was also significant mm -hmm. yeah yeah would, for, from what I remember we got down below 30 animals that we were seeing that time after that die-off and and then it came back and so yeah it's the second one there and the East Humboldt's never had a problem till now so yeah, yeah. Commissioner Cavan thank you uh, Larry any uh, any information on the goats at all? Or? You know, there. No, we made an estimate that we might have lost 30% of the goats, and that was just based on while we were doing these surveys and on the helicopter survey. I actually went on it this year with Caleb. We actually spotted one or two. I remember one in the East Humboldt's, a hair pile there, a goat, and then Caleb found one while we were looking for sheep in Lamoille Canyon. We found a couple of goats that had succumbed to disease in the same area as the sheep. But we also saw good numbers on the East Humboldt's of goats. We got a really good number of goats in the East Humboldt's this year, in February, right in the middle of the die-off there. And there were there were uh, kids with them. They were young goats, and it, it looked good. And uh, they, they were all on top. It was really weird. It was nothing but snow and rock up there, and, and most of them were right on top on the East Humboldt's. In the Rubies, the goats were scattered all the way down to the uh, PJ line on ridges and into the mahoganies and then on top and we didn't get as good a sample there so but just to be cautious we because we did find some dead goats we estimated about a 30 percent loss and that's why we recommended the, the reduction in quota thought it'd be better to be safe this year than sorry and just in case so mr ray i think a brief question when uh when was the first reports in the rubies that there were they brought in Denda, there were six sheep up in there. When it seems happen? like we started picking up information on both of them in November. And that's just when they start coming down on the winter range heavily and people are out there because it's deer season and that kind of thing. I just heard from a couple guides that had told me that they had reported seeing ship, six sheep up there early in the hunting season. I believe they did. I think some of the uh, hunters who turned in, who checked their sheep in, mentioned that they heard some coffee and different things. A few. You know, but I don't think anybody found like a pi big, big piles of dead animals yet. So I so, think there so was, was some indication. Some was, initial indication back yeah. as far as when? During the hunting season, I, I believe. I, I think there was a couple of reports. A couple of guys did, did think they heard some coughing and things. I heard people walk up to animals very close distance and they're standing there 20 feet and the animal's looking at them. It's yeah. not that's okay. not that's not normal but it's uh it so can be normal in the east humboldt range that it's it, it's they're interesting sheep in the east humboldt range sometimes uh, i remember talking to ken johns who owns a ranch who owned a ranch he's passed away but he and his boys used to go hunting after we released those sheep deer hunting and he talked about walking right through those sheep and and the ones on the east humboldt for some reason didn't seem to be quite as spooky sometimes as the as the others but yeah sometimes people can walk up on those things and they do cough for a lot of other reasons though too so okay thank you larry let's open this up for any comments from the public on this come on up uh, paul dixon clark county cab i wanted to uh follow up on your recommendation chairman that we get a report on this uh pat cummins who comes to all of our meetings in clark county i would ask that if Larry could get stuff to Pat before our cab meeting, Pat likes to do an update on the sheep for the people down there. We have a lot of people who are sheep hunters and do things. So I just take this time to follow on to your recommendation, but ask that besides getting it to the commission here for this public meeting, 
if we could get it out, you know, when uh, Suzanne sends out the uh, you know the agenda two weeks in advance, that way we can have updates at all the cab meetings because I know there's a lot of interested cabs. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Here, no other public comment. Thanks, uh, thanks, Larry. <laughs>